Hello, and welcome back to our video series on pharmacology. In this video, we will discuss chapter number 18, Ophthalmic Drugs. Our learning objectives for this chapter, compare and contrast the therapeutic effects of antibiotic drugs, antifungal drugs, antiviral drugs, and anti-inflammatory drugs that are used to treat the eye. Describe three categories of drugs that are used to treat eye allergy symptoms and their different therapeutic effects. Describe five categories of drugs used to treat glaucoma and their different therapeutic effects. Discuss the therapeutic effect of drugs used to treat dry eye syndrome and macular degeneration, mitriatic drugs, and anesthetic drugs. When given the name of a well-known ophthalmic drug, identify the trade name. When given the generic and trade names of an ophthalmic drug, identify what drug category it belongs to and what disease it's used to treat. When given an ophthalmic drug category, identify several generic and trade name drugs that fall in that category. And lastly, uh, when given an ending uh, common to several generic drugs, identify the related drug category. Uh, first, we'll start off with drugs that are used to treat eye infections. Now, superficial uh, bacterial or fungal or viral infections can occur either within the eye itself or the eyelid and the surrounding structures, cornea, the conjunctiva, and also the tear duct. Now, these infections will be treated uh, topically with uh, antibiotic drugs for bacterial infections or also uh, sulfonamide drugs for bacterial infections, uh, antifungal drugs for fungal infections, and antiviral drugs for viral infections. And when it comes to uh, topical antibiotic drugs, they work because they disrupt the cell wall of the bacteria. And because th these are antibiotic drugs, these are not effective against viral infections. Some common examples of uh, topical antibiotics that you would use, azithromycin, which is sold under the trade name uh, azacite, uh, bacitracin, which is sold under the name actracin, bezafloxacin, which is sold under the trade name Bezavance, Ciprofloxin, which is sold under the name Siloxin, and Erythromycin, which is sold under the trade name Alotacin, Cataphloxacin, which is sold under the trade name Zymar, Gentamycin, which is sold under uh, several trade names Garamycin, Gentacidin, and Gentac, Levofloxacin, which is sold under the name Quixin, Moxifloxacin, which is sold under the trade name Vigamox, Ofloxacin, which is sold under the name Acuflox, Tobermycin, which is sold under the names Defy or Tobrex or Actobe. Okay, now we'll mention a drug alert. Uh, some topical antibiotic drugs uh, for the eye are also available as an oral antibiotic drug. Now, antibiotic drugs can have the same generic name, but names for the topical eye trade name drug and the oral trade name drugs are different. A focus on healthcare. Uh, most states either recommend or require a topical anti-infective agent drug to be applied to the eyes of a newborn infant to prevent the possibility of infection and the possible blindness from gonorrhea, which is a sexually transmitted disease contracted as the baby moves through the birth canal of an infected mother. Anti-infective agents used for this purpose include erythromycin and silver nitrate. Now, although silver nitrate has been commonly used for years and is the least expensive of these two drugs, it has several drawbacks. Silver nitrate produces a conjunctival irritation and swelling, which may interfere with the mother-child bonding and is also ineffective in preventing eye infections due to chlamydia, which is another example of a sexually transmitted disease. Erythromycin does not produce irritation and is effective against chlamydia. Another class of drug that's used to treat uh, bacterial eye infections are topical uh, sulfonamide drugs. An example of this would be uh, sulfacetamid, which is sold under the names AK Sulf and Sulster. This is a topical anti-infective drug. It's not classified as an antibiotic drug, but as an anti-infective drug. That's because unlike antibiotic drugs that actually kill bacteria, this drug inhibits the growth of bacteria and are used to treat bacterial infections of the eye and eyelids. This is another type of drug used to treat eye infections, uh, topical antifungal drugs. And we have one example here, netamycin, which is sold under the trade name uh, natacin. Another type of drug used for eye infections would be topical antiviral drugs. An example of this kind of drug would be trifluridine, sold under the name viroptic. This is a type of anti-infective drug that's only effective against viruses, such as a herpes simplex virus uh, 1 and 2. The other type of uh, antiviral drug, again, cyclovir, which is sold under the trade name Vitrocert. This is administered as an implant that is placed within the eye, within the vitreous humor, so that the drug will come in contact with the retina directly. This could also be used to uh, topically treat cytomegalovirus retinitis. All right, now we'll move on to drugs that are used to treat eye inflammation. Now, inflammation of the eye can be due to uh, any number of reasons. It could be because of injury or trauma, being in contact with certain chemicals, uh, allergies, or infections. 
Now, drugs that are used to treat inflammation within the eye treat the eyelid, cornea, the conjunctiva, and the tear duct. There are different classes of drugs that are used to treat eye inflammation. Uh, one type is a corticosteroid drug. Now, these are used uh, topically to treat the inflammation. They work by suppressing the immune system's local inflammatory response. And two examples of this kind of drug would be dexamethasone, which is sold as Maxidex, and also diflupridate, which is sold as durazol. And some other examples of corticosteroid drugs, fluoromethylone, which is sold as FML or Flarex, loteprenol, which is sold as Lodamax or Alrex, prednisolone, which is sold as Econopred Plus or Predforte, and also Remexolone, which is sold under the name Vexol. Now, some anti-inflammatory drugs are administered uh, directly within the eye itself, right into the uh, vitreous humor to help treat uh, uveitis, which is an inflammation of the middle tunic, the middle layer of the eye. And some examples of this type of drug would be dexamethasone, which is sold under the name uh, Oxidex, which is an implant into the eye, fluocinolone, which is sold under the name Redisert, which is an implant into the eye, and triamcinolone, which is sold under the name uh, Triveris, which is injected as a solution. Another class of drugs that could be used to treat eye inflammation are the NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And these will treat the pain and inflammation often after LASIK surgery or cataract surgery on an eye. And some examples of this type of drug, Bromfenac, which is sold as Zybrom, Diclofenac, which is sold as Voltaren, Ketorolac, which is sold as Acular, and Nepafenac, which is sold as Nevenac. Another type of drug that's used to treat uh, inflammation uh, within the eye are midriatic or psychoplegic drugs. These will help to dilate and fix the pupil. And these will treat the inflammation of the iris and of the uveal tract. And some examples here would be atropine and scopolamine. All right, now we'll move on to drugs that are used to treat eye allergy symptoms. And eye allergy symptoms occur for the same reason that they occur in other parts of the body. There's a foreign substance that enters the body, and the body's attached to that antigen and it will form a antigen antibody complex. Now the antigen antibody uh, complex can be destroyed and during this process uh, histamine is released. Now, histamine will cause vasodilation of the blood vessels so tissues will become uh, swollen or inflamed or reddened. And this whole process will irritate tissues and therefore cause pain and itching. And there are various types of antihistamine drugs that are used for eye allergies and these work because they block the effects of histamines. That's why they're called antihistamines. Here's some examples of this type of drug. Lacraftidine, which is sold under the name Lasticaft. Azelastine, which is sold under the name Optivar. Amedistine, which is sold under the name Emidine. Epinastin, which is sold under the name Elastat. Ketodophen, which is sold under the name Claritin I, Zatator, or Zyrtec Itchy Eye. And Olopatidine, which is sold under the name Patinol or Patidae. Another type of drug that would be used to treat eye allergies are mast cell stabilizer drugs. And these act as antihistamine drugs because they prevent the cell membrane of the mast cells within the eyes from releasing histamines. And some examples of this type of drug, papadestine, which is sold under the name Vapreve, and chromalin. Other examples of mast cell stabilizer drugs, lodoxamide, which is sold under the name alamide, nadocromil, which is sold as alacryl, and pamiralast, which is sold under alamast. Another type of drug that's used to treat eye allergy symptoms are decongestant drugs. And these work because they constrict the blood vessels in the conjunctiva to reduce redness. And some examples of this type of drug, nefazoline, which is sold as albalon, oxymetazoline, which is sold as visine LR, phenylephrine, which is sold as midfrin, and tetrahydrosoline, which is sold as murine tears plus and visine. Now it's common to have a combination drug that will include uh, multiple aspects of treatment when it comes to eye allergies. So a common a combination is having an antihistamine drug along with a decongestant drug. Some examples of this would be Opcon A, which is a combination of phenyramine and phasoline, and also the drug Visine A, which is a combination of phenyramine and tetrahydrosoline. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat dry eye syndrome. Now this condition, xerophthalmia, is caused by an insufficient production of tears because of eye inflammation or simply because of old age. And this can also be a side effect of some of certain drugs. This can be treated with over-the-counter drugs, such as artificial tears, or with prescription drugs. An example of a artificial tears medication would be carboxymethylcellulose, which is sold under the trade name Refresh. 
This is an over-the-counter artificial tears gel. An example of a drug that could be used to treat dry eyes, uh, cyclosporin, which is sold under the name Restasis. And this works by decreasing the T-cells that cause inflammation, which will end up producing more tears. And another example of a drug, hydroxypropyl cellulose, which is sold under the name Lacrocert. And this is a, a dissolving insert that helps to stabilize the tear film within the eye and keep it in place throughout the day. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat a glaucoma. A glaucoma is when you have an increased intraocular pressure, and if it goes untreated, it can eventually lead to blindness. And drugs that would treat glaucoma act by either decreasing the amount of aqueous humor that's circulating within the anterior and posterior chambers of the eye. And if you lessen the amount of the humor within these chambers, you also decrease the amount of intraocular pressure. Another way they could act would be by constricting the pupil to open the angle of contact between the iris and the trabecular meshwork. And this would allow the aqueous humor to flow more freely. There are various types of drugs that would treat glaucoma. Uh, first ones we'll talk about are the beta blocker drugs. And these will work because they block the beta receptors in the eye. And these will decrease the production of aqueous humor to decrease the amount of intraocular pressure. Now these kinds of drugs have no effect on the pupil size. So it does not cause a blurred vision or night blindness, which is often associated with other types of glaucoma drugs. Some examples of this type of drug, Pataxolol, which is sold under the name Batopic S, Cartiolol, Levobunanol, which is sold under the name Betagen, Metipranolol, which is sold under the name Optipranolol, and Timolol, which is sold under the name Timoptic. Another class of drug that could be used to treat glaucoma are the alpha receptor agonists. These work to stimulate the alpha receptors within the eye. And by doing so, this will decrease the amount of aqueous humor that's produced. And in addition to producing less aqueous humor, there's an increase of outflow of aqueous humor. And some examples of this type of drug, aproclonidine, which is sold under the name iopidine, and also brimonidine, which is sold under the name alphagin P. In addition to those two classes of drugs, there's another class that will help treat glaucoma. Those are prostaglandin F agonist drugs. And these work to stimulate prostaglandin F receptors. And by doing so, will increase the outflow of aqueous humor. So when you have more aqueous humor leaving the eye, that's going to lower the intraocular pressure. And some examples of uh, this class of drug, bimatoprost, which is sold as uh, Lumigan, Leitnoprost, which is sold under the name Zalatin, Tafluprost, which is sold under the name Zyoptin, Travopost, which is sold under the name Travitin. Now I have a, a quick did you know. Uh, the drug bimatoprost has a side effect of causing hair growth. But this side effect of uh, this drug is the therapeutic effect of a drug with the trade name Latisse, which is used to increase the length and thickness and darkness of eyelashes. Now, bimatoprost also has a undesirable side effect where you have an increased pigmentation within the iris of the eye, and this can be permanent. Another type of drug that's used to treat glaucoma, carbonic anhydrase inhibitor drugs. And these work by blocking the enzyme carbonic anhydrase, which is active in the production of aqueous humor. Now, this drug can be given in multiple routes of administration. It can be given orally. An example of that kind of drug would be acetazolamide, which is sold under the trade name uh, Diamox. This type of drug can also be applied topically, such as uh, brenzolamide, which is sold under the name Azopt, and also the drug dorzolamide, which is sold under the name Trusopt. Another class of drug that can be used to treat glaucoma are myotic drugs. And these were the first drugs that were developed to treat glaucoma. And these have the same action as acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter found in the parasympathetic nervous system. And this class of drug will cause the uh, pupils to constrict, which will increase the outflow of the aqueous humor. Or it will lower the amount of intraocular pressure. Here's some examples of uh, this class of drug. Of course, acetylcholine, which is sold under the trade name Myocol E. Uh, Carbacol, which is sold under the name Myostat Carboptic. And Pilocarpine, which is sold under the name uh, Pilocar. Another class of drugs that's used to treat glaucoma, uh, cholinesterase inhibitor drugs. A cholinesterase will normally uh, destroy acetylcholine. So by eliminating the inhibitor, acetylcholine is able to remain present, is able to prolong the effect of uh, constricting the pupil. An example of this kind of drug would be ecothiophate iodine, which would be sold under the name phospholine iodine. And like most conditions, it's common to see drugs that are used in combination with one another. So when it comes to combination drugs for glaucoma, uh, the drug COSOPT is a combination of dorsalamide, which is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor drug, and also timolol, which is a beta blocker drug. All right, now I'll move on to drugs that are used to treat 
uh, MD, macular degeneration. Now this is a chronic progressive loss of central vision. And the macula is the area of the greatest visual acuity within the eye. And there are two generic types of macular degeneration. It can either be dry or wet. So when you have dry macular degeneration, this is the kind that occurs naturally with age. Now you can also have what's called wet macular degeneration. This is where you have abnormal blood vessels that will grow under the macula. And these vessels are pretty fragile and will start to leak pretty easily. Now when they start to leak, this causes the macula to lift away from the retina. These some drugs that would be used to treat MD. Aflibercept, which is sold under the name ELEA, which is an immunosuppressant drug that helps to decrease inflammation. Pagaptinib, which is sold under the trade name uh, Macugen. This will block vascular endothelial growth factor, which helps cause the formation of new blood vessels. Another example of a drug, ranibizumab, which is sold as uh, Lucentis. This is a monoclonal antibody derived drug. Fertepirfen, which is sold as uh, Visidine. This is a phototherapy drug. This kind of drug will be given uh, intravenously. Then after the intravenous administration, the eye is then exposed to a red laser light to help activate the drug within the retina. That's why it's a phototherapy drug. All right, now we'll talk about anesthetic uh, ophthalmic drugs. These are used in the eye to help facilitate eye examinations and for short surgical procedures, such as uh, a suture removal or removing a foreign body of the eye. Some examples of this kind of drug, uh, lidocaine, sold under the name uh, actin, propericaine, also known as alkane or opthetic, and also tetracaine. All right, now we'll talk about uh, midriatic drugs. These are topical drugs used to help dilate the pupil, especially right before an eye surgery or during an eye examination. And the way they work is they work to paralyze the muscles of accommodation within the iris. This is called psychoplegia. And these drugs are used to treat inflammatory conditions of the iris and also of the uh, uveal tract of the eye. Now, midriatic drugs also act to block the action of acetylcholine, which will normally uh, restrict the pupil. Here's some examples of midriatic drugs. Uh, atropine, also known as Soptoatropine, cyclopentylate, also known as uh, pentylair or cyclogil, hematropine, also known by the trade name esoptohematropine, uh, uh, phenylephrine, also known as midphrine, scopolamine, also known as esoptohyacine, and also uh, tropicamide, also known as medriacil. In this image, we have a, a patient that has medriasis and cycloplasia, which is uh, fixating the people and then dilating the people. Clearly, see very clearly dilated here, something that's very common for eye exams or for eye surgeries. So not only do you want to dilate the pupil, like here, but you also want to paralyze the muscles of the iris. So there's no accommodation there. So it doesn't want to adjust its size you know, to accommodate for, for the amount of light being allowed to enter the eye. Okay, often you'll see uh, midriatic drugs sold in combination. Some examples of this would be cyclomidril, which is a combination of cyclopentylate and phenylephrine, and also pyramid which is a combination of hydroxyamphetamine and antropicamide. It's another type of combination drug you'll see when it comes to ophthalmic drugs are combination antibiotic drugs. And these will contain two or three uh, types of antibiotics working together. The drug AK polybac is a combination of uh, bacitracin and polymyxin B. The drug blefamide is a combination of prednisolone and also and sulfacetamide. The drug maxitrol is a combination of three antibiotics it includes neomycin, dexamethasone, and polymyxin B. Metamid is a combination of prednisolone and sulfosetamide. A neosporin ophthalmic is a combination of uh, bacitracin, neomycin, and polymyxin B. Polypred uh, ophthalmic is a combination of neomycin, prednisolone. Uh, polytrim uh, ophthalmic, a combination of polymyxin B and trimethoprim. Pred G ophthalmic, a combination of gentamicin and prednisolone. Tobradex ST combination of dexamethasone, tobramycin, vasocidin, a combination of sulfacetamide, prednisolone. And the last one we'll cover, uh, xylit, which is a combination of tobramycin and also otiprinol. Okay, we'll end this chapter talking about uh, drugs that are used to treat strabismus. Uh, strabismus is the deviation of one or both eyes to the center or to the side. So this includes uh, being cross-eyed or being wall-eyed. This is caused by an abnormal shortening of some of the extraocular muscles. So that's why the eyes are not centered correctly, because some muscles are this shorter than others, so they can't keep them aligned properly. So the drugs that are used to treat this condition are injected to paralyze the muscle fibers uh, to allow them to lengthen. It's also used to treat related eye muscle disorders of blepharospasms and nystagmus.
An example of this kind of drug would be a botulinum toxin type A, more commonly known as uh, Dysport or Botox. And lastly, a did you know uh, for this chapter? A botulinum toxin type A is actually a diluted neur neurotoxin from the bacterium Clostridium botulinum. And it's the same bacteria that causes food poisoning or botulism. Now, it's also a popular drug that is injected into the muscles of the face to help release the wrinkles. All right, that brings us to the end of this chapter. We will continue our video series on pharmacology for the health professional with our next video on chapter number 19, Ear, Nose, and Throat Drugs.